with Todd Kelly at the Old Hickory Trainery, and Todd and I have talked a few times about doing a little video similar to what I did with uh, Matt Delk, looking at belt buckles. Todd, you're kind of known for patrol medallions. That's one of your core original collections. And yeah. I maybe you could kind of coach us up a little bit, tell us about patrol medallions. Yeah, Jason, I started collecting patrol medallions when I was a professional scouter back in the 90s, and the, they changed the uh, patrol medallions from the colored twill ones that look kind of like this that you remember from the 70s and 80s to the tan ones that look kind of like this uh, in 89. And so when I was a professional scouter, one of our jobs was we had to go around to all the scout distributors in our district, and I had four in four towns that were all belt stores. And so when they changed the patrol medallions, they all of a sudden had these just bags of these colored twill ones laying around they, did, they wanted to get rid of. And so they had no idea what to do with them. So I was the Boy Scout guy, so they just handed me bags of these things. And all of a sudden, a collection was born. Nice. Little did I know that years later, it would become a full-time business uh, buying and selling patrol medallions. So uh, from that, I, I went around and I started buying up collections and, and I found older stashes of these like red twill ones that were from the 50s and 60s uh, up until 72. And then I, I got into the, the felt ones that are um, older, um, like this one, you know, this, from, this is a hound, a BSA felt hound. Uh, from the, the 40s, I guess, and then even older, uh, the difference is BSA on this one versus no BSA on this black bear. Uh, these are even older. These go back to the 20s. And so, and then there were square ones for a couple of years before this that were silk screened. Uh, but patrol medallions have always, uh, patrols have always been around in scouting. Uh, a way to designate your patrol membership uh, has always been around. Originally, they used ribbons, and you've seen those before. Right, yeah, well, different they have, colors told you. Yeah, the were. colors, the different colors. You had either two or three, sometimes four ribbons on your, uh, your patrol flash, and it based on the color, that's what your patrol was. And so if you were Eagle, for instance, I think it was maybe blue and white or green and black or something, and, and there, there would usually be two different colors. But then in the 20s, they changed to this method of identifying the patrols with a patrol medallion you wear on your sleeve, and so every boy who joins a Boy Scout troop uh, is a member of some kind of critter patrol. Right. And so, you know, nowadays they're computer designed and they're, um, I just don't think they're as, uh, I don't think they're as, uh, as interesting as the older ones, but there are some really unusual designs. What I have here in this box, Jason, is recently the BSA discontinued a lot of the old traditional patrol medallion designs, not necessarily the patrols, but they changed the designs okay. from the old, more traditional, uh, you know, bear, for instance, went away, bobcat went away, and it was replaced with a more, this is badger, it went away with a, you know, with those, and they went with a more modern, um, more um, like graphic, logo? more graphic okay, logo for the patrol, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so uh, as, as technology in, in patch production has increased, just like with everything else graphic-wise, uh, they have the ability to make some really elaborate uh, patches now, but right. but my you know first love is these old red and black patrol medallions. I just I love these guys, and I have um, on my eBay store the Big Dog Two Four Three uh, Big Rock Publishing. We have um, bulk quantities of every single uh, red and black patrol medallion in the felts and also in the twills, and then also in the colored twills. I, I have bulk quantities of of every single one of those except for seagull in the red and black twill. So if you're out there watching and you have boxes or bags full of seagulls, I need them. So I'll make you good trades on those. But uh, for some reason, everybody who, who collects or, or deals in patrol medallions seems to have one or two maybe that they just can't find. And for some reason, seagull is my one I can never keep enough of. And when I get one, it'll be gone. And uh, because I sell a lot of sets, um, it's 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 hard to keep you know bunches of those in stock because I can rarely ever get them. So uh, so if you know seagull years ago it was rocket for some reason I could never find rockets. Then all of a sudden I found a big stash of rockets somewhere at a tradery. And now I got rockets come you know galore, but no seagulls. So well earlier at this tradery I was talking to Ron Oslin and Joe Close about uh, bear badges. Yep. And so patrol medallions kind of strike me as something similar in that. For a collection, you're really talking about things that have been, uh, uh, in other words, disbanded, discontinued. Right. Discontinued, you right. Know, this was the set of patrol medallions for this time period. 
certain ones discontinued, certain ones added in new, much right. like merit badges. Exactly. Is that kind of how you do? You have checklists and stuff. You kind of I do. And I do. In fact, I um, I put together a, a really massive uh, Excel spreadsheet, and it has a bunch of columns and and within each series, for example, there are different backs. So you know that's how you kind of tell the difference. The red and black twills that were used from um, from you know 53 to 72, for example, have three different types of backs. They have this gauze back, or not gauze back, but glue back. Some people call it gum. I prefer to call it paste back, and I don't know why I use that term. Nobody else seems to like that term, but most people call it either glue or gum back. But there are also some rubber back ones that are red rubber, and then there are also some that are clear plastic backs. And I don't know if I have any of those in there, but I, I also uh, I store my Patrol medallions different ways. I keep my bulk quantities in these bins that I got from uh, either Hobby Lobby or Container Store or something like that. Um, they, they come with lids, but the hinges tend to break on the lids. But these are perfect. You can get 25 Patrol medallions in one of these little squares. And I just printed up some labels. I don't know if it's possible to see right here. I just have the series, and this this is series five because it's the fifth different iteration of those, and I um, I have the name of the patrol on the label, and I just have each one of these little bins labeled, and I keep them full. And so you know, um, as I go through, you know, this is the paste back box, so everything in here is going to have a paste back. And I, if I sell one on eBay, I go to this and I just say, here's the bat paste back, and he wants five of them, so here they go. And so it's a, it's a good way and easy for me to keep it straight. Uh, but I also have a separate way for traderies. I bring inventory in, in the uh, Chris Jensen boxes with the um, patch protection system sleeves. And I was able to take that Excel spreadsheet and do a simple mail merge and print um, the index cards that come with the uh, sleeves from Johnny Pleasants from Brush Creek Trading. Um, and if you can look in here, I don't know if the camera will pick it up. We can put a picture on it, a picture on the video here. Right. But it, this one says Raven Patrol Series 6, and it tells the years it was produced. It tells the kind of back it has, and it has a little code number that says 06CV um, for vellum backing, which is the paper uh, backing. And this colored twill series had about six or seven different backs. And this one is, well, this one actually happens to be plastic. Um, but there's a, um, a clear plastic back, there's a blue plastic back, there's a, a starch back and a gauze back and a, a so all it, kinds of different backs. It does remind me again of merit badges, use the analogy, because if you want to get really deep into merit badges and insignia, you look at the backs and the plastic. Exactly, and the exactly. Backing. Or you could just stay up here and do like a typeset. Exactly. Of different designs and stuff. Well, and also within, within a patrol medallion, particularly in this... A colored twill series that was 53 to 72 you might have like this is liberty and liberty bell only showed up in this series it didn't show up in any of the others but there are different variations of the actual bell itself and so not only the backs can be different but the fronts can be different as well some of them have thicker outlines on the bell some of them have a slightly different color of blue maybe um, but it just it depends frontiersman i don't have another frontiersman in here but this is a good example there's one where, where it's brown on here that actually there was a white border one and there was one where the guy is kind of white with a brown outline instead of brown with a brown outline. So over that 20 year span that they issued these patches, there were some a bunch of different variations. And you can think about these being produced like 10,000 at a time or something. Or more, yeah. And then over those years, so there's just lots and lots of runs. As compared to maybe like an OA patch, they're going to make like 300 of them, and that's all. Right. These are just made over and over, so you can have a lot of variations. They're made in bulk, bulk quantities. And so what I, I like about patrol medallions is, is kind of what you said earlier, is that it's a finite, fixed set. They're not going to make any more of these old ones, although they did make some reproduction sets for Wood Badge a few years ago, National Supply did. 
Um, those don't look quite like these, and so you can always tell the difference between those reproduction ones and the original ones. Uh, you know, for example, if we pulled out a, um, a, I had a buffalo out earlier, so if we pull out buffalo, you know, this is what the buffalo looks like, but, um, but the buffalo now, there's not a buffalo, there's technically an American bison, which in the old set looked like this, and so you actually have the same animal two different ways. You have the American bison and the buffalo, which for all intents and purposes, we think of them as being basically the same thing, but they're called something different. And so I just think those little nuances are, are really cool and clever in, in the patrol medallion world. Has someone written a reference book on these, like a lot of areas? Quite a few people have. Richard Shields wrote one back in the uh, maybe the 80s or 90s, and, and it's funny because I get calls all the time about that because... Richard, uh, you know, we, we learn new stuff all the time, and so Richard had listed uh, in the in the red and black twill, he or black and, red and black twill, he had listed Condor as being available. It was never produced in red and black twill. So I get get people all the time that'll send me a, a message on eBay or send me a, a text or, a, or a, an email on my website and say, I need a Condor in red and black twill. And I have to, and I'll say, you know, kind of joking with them, I'll say, you must have Richard Shields' book. And they say, yes, I do. And I say, well, you know, we learned after Richard produced that book that they didn't make that one. Right. And so, you know, and, it, and then people will, will swear they've seen one, but it didn't exist. And, and these are available in such bulk quantities that if it existed in that series, I would have at least seen it yeah. once, you know. Yeah, and so it's cool. And, and what's really good about this is for a new collector, young collector, or somebody who just wants a quickie, new something to fiddle with, uh, patrol medallions are actually a very inexpensive collection to get into. Um, for example, I sell an almost complete set because I'm missing a seagull of the red and black twills for like 50 bucks. And, and I, I sell those on uh, the Facebook page, I sell those on eBay, and I sell those on my website, and I sell them at shows. And it's, uh, it's basically 51 of the 52 patches, including blank, which each of the series had a blank. Okay. That's blank. That's blank. And... Um, and I'll sell that for like 50 bucks. So it's less than a dollar a patch. And you can get all of the, the glue backs or gum backs or paste backs or whatever you want to call them. Now the rubber ones, red rubber backs, and the clear plastic backs are, are quite a bit more expensive because they were produced later and in lesser quantities than these uh, paste back ones. But same thing with the, the colored twills. If you wanted to get into all the different variations of the colored twills, I mean, you still, you'd be looking at less than a couple hundred dollars to put that whole entire set together because... You can go to any tradery in the country any weekend of the year and find patrol medallions in everybody's dollar box. Um, most patrol medallions, I would say, you know, from the red and black twills forward, if you pay more than a dollar for a patrol medallion, you know, at a tradery, for example, out of some, you know, off of somebody's table, that's that's a good deal. I mean, it's it's a good deal if you get them for a dollar or less. You, I sell them for about four ninety nine for the red and black twills individually you know on my ebay store uh, but that's because i have to cover cost of shipping i always have free shipping on patrol medallions and i pay the ebay fees and the paypal fees etc so um, even at five dollars it's a good deal if you have to fill in some holes uh, i think I, I sell the rubber backs and the plastic backs for 8.99 because they're quite a bit harder to find and i have quite a bit fewer of them so uh, the the felts for instance the with bsa felts now are anywhere from 10 to $15, and they came in two different kinds of threads on the back there. There were two different variations of the backs on these, and I may not have a good example uh, to show you, but yeah, here we go. There's a, um, like this is a hyena with a solid black threads on the back. You see the ring around here? Yeah, yeah. That means that this is older because they were produced with these solid black silk threads first. And then later on, to save cost, they changed the backs to a black and white cotton uh, thread on the back for these rings. And that's kind of how you tell the difference. Otherwise, the fronts are identical. Well, this is a longhorn and this is a hyena, so they're not identical. But if you were looking at a black and white hyena versus a black hyena, the front would look identical. And so, so that's kind of the, the distinction on those. Um, actually, here's a hyena. I can show you the difference. Here's a black hyena black back hyena, black and white black hyena. But if you look at the fronts, they're practically identical. And so the black thread was just earlier than the black and white thread. And the, uh, the 
ones that do not say DSA? What's kind of a generic value price? Um, you know, what's crazy about that is now's the time to buy those if you can find them because I have bought some no BSA, you know, 20s and, and early 30s issues for as little as 18 to $20 a piece. And there was a time 10 years ago where you could easily get 75 to to $100 for most of those. Uh, so if you're looking to start a collection of the no BSAs and you can find a bunch of them, now's the time to get them at those lower prices. So. People are starting to get more interested in patrol medallions. I know that I have a lot of people who contact me on a regular basis uh, looking for a specific variation, a specific back, um, and I can uh, can help you with checklist. If, if you're interested in, uh, in getting started in collecting patrol medallions or if you're already collecting patrol medallions and you want some more information, uh, you can look me up on eBay. Jason will have some links to, uh, to my website and so forth and how to get in touch with me. Uh, but I'd be happy to talk patrol medallions with anybody who, who's listening out there who wants to uh, talk about them. Well, Todd, appreciate it, man. Thanks. Glad we got you on the air. Thank you, Jason. Okay.